Hello dear students, welcome to the e-content lecture series on the subject botany. Today our topic is Biogeographic Regions of India. In today's lecture, we will be first of all having an introduction to the discipline of biogeography. Then we will list the biogeographic regions and the constituent biotic provinces of India. And lastly, we will try to have an in detail discussion on the main features of biogeographic regions of India. Now let us start with an introduction to the discipline of biogeography. Biogeography is a scientific discipline that deals with the study of geographical distribution of biota across space and time. In nature, we have seen that most of the species of plants, animals, they are essentially restricted in their distribution. This restricted distribution is either by natural barriers or because of the history of their origin and subsequent dispersal. Based upon the shared common biogeographic features and the unique biota, biogeographic classifications of world have been proposed from time to time. In fact, the major global units of distribution of biota, what are commonly referred to as biogeographic realms. These are largely defined by the past and present relationship of the continents to each other with reference to their biota. At present, throughout the world, six major biogeographic realms are recognized. Let us name these biogeographic realms one by one, starting with first one that is Ethiopian. It includes Africa, except the northwestern corner and the parts of Southern Arabia. Second biogeographic realm is Oriental. It comprises of the tropical Asia and the associated continental islands. The third biogeographic realm is Palearctic. It includes two continents, that is Eurasia, but above the tropics and Northwest Africa. The fourth biogeographic realm is Nearctic. It includes North America, but except the Mexican tropics. The fifth one is Neotropic. It includes South and Central America, and also the Mexican tropics. The last and sixth biogeographic realm is Australian. It includes Australia with New Guinea and the associated islands. From the biogeographic point of view, if we see India, it occupies a unique position in the whole of the Asian continent. Located within the oriental realm of tropical Asia, India shares the Palearctic realm in its northwestern side. The northeast India, together with the Andaman and Nicobar group of islands, it collectively forms a part of the Indo-Malayan sub-region. In its south, the Deccan Plateau, along with the Sri Lanka, it absorbs the Ethiopian realm. Now, after having a discussion about biogeography as a scientific discipline and the biogeographical classification at the global level, now let us shift to the biogeographic regions of India. We will first of all list these biogeographic regions and their constituent biotic provinces. We know in its north, India has the mighty Himalayas, which form a strong boundary on its north. And in the south, we have the Indian Ocean. Because of these two boundaries in the north Himalayas, in the south Indian Ocean, India forms a naturally delineated biogeographic unit. Within this biogeographic unit, further regions have been recognized. Each of these regions support their own characteristic plant and animal life. 
Rogers and Panver in the year 1988 who first attempted a biogeographic classification of India. Later on, in the year 2002, they revised this biogeographic classification of India using the geographical information system, what is commonly called as GIS. 10 biogeographic regions have been described, which are further subdivided into a total of 26 biotic provinces. This classification was mainly based on the criteria such as biota, altitude, moisture, topography, rainfall, etc. Now let us list these 10 biogeographic regions and also their biotic provinces. Let us start with the first one that is Trans Himalaya. It includes two biotic provinces A. Ladakh mountains B. Tibetan Plateau. Second biogeographic region in India is Himalaya. It includes four biotic provinces A. Northwest Himalaya B. West Himalaya C. Central Himalaya D. East Himalaya. The third biogeographic region in India is Indian Desert. It includes just two biotic provinces A. Thar B. Kach. The fourth biogeographic region is the semi-arid. It comprises of two biotic provinces A. Punjab Plains B. Gujarat Rajputana. The next biogeographic region is the Western Ghats. It includes two biotic provinces A. Malabar Plains B. Western Ghat Mountains. The sixth biogeographical region in India is the Deccan Peninsula. It includes five biotic provinces starting with A. Central Highlands B. Chota Nagpur C. Eastern Highlands D. Central Plateau and E. Deccan South. The seventh one is the Gangetic Plains. It is just divided into two biotic provinces A. Upper Gangetic Plains and B. Lower Gangetic Plains. The next biogeographic region is the coasts. It includes three biotic provinces starting with A. West Coast B. East Coast and the C. Lakshadweep. The ninth one is Northeast India. It includes two biotic provinces A. Brahmaputra Valley B. Northeast Hills. The last one what is 10th biogeographic region in India is Islands. It includes two biotic provinces A. Andamans and B. Nicobars. After listing these biogeographic regions and their biotic provinces, now let us discuss in detail the main features of these biogeographic regions one by one, starting with Trans Himalaya. The region has an area of about 2.6 million square kilometers and it includes high altitude cold desert plateau of Tibet. In India, the Trans Himalaya falls within Lahul Spiti district of Himachal Pradesh and Ladakh province of Jammu and Kashmir state. In this region, the vegetation is too sparse, which comprises of alpine steppe type, and the proportion of endemism is very high. The isolated and rugged mountains of this region, they support a richest diversity of wild sheep, and wild goats. A very distinct herbivore community, what we call as grazers, they include wild ox, Tibetan ass, gazelle, and four horned antelope. The carnivore community in this region includes the Sunol leopard, Tibetan wolf. Smaller animals such as Royal Spica and Himalayan Marmot. In this region, the high altitude lakes and the marshes they support an impressive and unique 
avifauna. For example, black-necked crane. The second biogeographic region is the Himalaya. Now, let us discuss the diagnostic feature of this biogeographic region. Although this biogeographic region, it constitutes about 7% of the country's surface area, its contribution in terms of natural resource is immense, particularly the water and forest resources. The altitudinal range in this region of Himalaya, where the plants and animals occur, it is too great, around 6,000 meters. Due to the variation in climate and geology in this region, vegetation varies greatly from subtropical forests to the alpine meadows and scrubs. In this region, especially in the lower subtropical belt of this region, mixed deciduous forests, they occupy the lowest elevations. These are replaced by cheer pine, scientifically known as Pinus roxy birch. And then, moving ahead along the elevation, it is replaced by Banj oak, scientifically known as Curicus leucotrichophora. It is around 2,000 meters. The megafauna of this elevational belt include sambar and wild boar. In the temperate belt of this region, particularly below 3,500 meters, several forest types occur. These include, number one, broadleaf mesophyll forests, which are comprised mainly of maples, scientifically known as acer, and also other deciduous species. The second type of forest is broadleaf evergreen forest, which is mainly comprised of oaks. The third type is evergreen coniferous forests, which are mainly comprised of deodar, citrus deodara, blue pine, scientifically known as Pinus walchiana, spruce, scientific name Spicea smithiana, silver fir, scientific name Abies pindru. The typical fauna in this region includes musk deer, monol pheasants, etc. The subalpine forests and sometimes also occasionally scrubs, they have rhododendrons, beautiful flowered plants. These rhododendrons are interspersed with alpine meadows. In general, a high proportion of endemic biota has evolved in Himalayan region. For example, we see in Himalaya nearly 60 different species of balsams, scientifically known as impatiens. Third biogeographic region is the Indian desert. From the biogeographic point of view, it is the eastward extension of the Sahara Arabian desert system. It comprises the Thar Desert and the Kush area of western India. Annual rainfall in this region is less than 400 millimeters. The region shows extreme seasonality of the rainfall, which mostly occurs within few weeks during the rainy season. The forests in this region, that is the Indian desert, it comprises of mostly bushy, thorny plants, such as Acacia nilotica, Prosopis cineraria, Salvadora oleoides. There are also wild animals which need special mention. The unique subspecies of wild ass is confined to the run of catch. The desert fox, Indian desert gate, hornbara bustard, and some sand grouse species are found only in the Thar Desert. Migratory birds in this region, such as flamingos, find their breeding sites only in the run of catch. Now let us discuss the fourth biogeographic region, that is the semi-arid. This region occupies nearly 17% of land area in India. The region, it transcends from parts of Punjab in the north to the Tamil Nadu in the south. And it has strong biogeographical affiliation with the West Asia and North Africa. Some of the plants with African affinity in this region include 
Acacia, Caparis, Grevia, etc. Forests in this region they comprise of pure stands of Anogesus pendula, which occur on gentle slopes of mountain ranges such as Ara Valley. The large herbivores include black buck, Chausinga, and Nilga. The carnivores in this region are represented by Asiatic lions. These Asiatic lions are now restricted to the Gir National Park in Gujarat. Now, let us shift to the fifth biogeographic region, that is the Western Ghats. This region extends from Kanyakumari in the southern extreme tip of India to the hills that are south of Tapti River in the north. These Western Ghats, they rise from sea level to an elevation up to 2700 meters. In these Ghats, the moist evergreen forests are most extensive. The region is exceptionally species rich and contributes about 4,000 species of higher plants, which account nearly about 27% of the India's total flora. The endemism in this region is quite high. Nearly 1,800 plant species are endemic to this particular region. On the hill slopes in this region, wherein we have fertile soil, forests have been replaced by plantations of tea, coffee, cocoa, rubber, cardamom, and other plantation crops. The Western Ghats have a number of endemic animals, which are unique to this region only. These include primates like Nilgiri langur, loin-tailed macaw. Among the rodents, we have the spiny dormouse. Among us, the squirrels, we have grizzly giant squirrel. Among the carnivores, we have Molabor civet, rusty spotted kate, and then shifting to the ungulates, we have an animal by the name of Nilgiri thar. And among the hornbills, we have Malabar Grey Hornbill. All these animals are endemic and unique to this region. Now, let us shift to the sixth biogeographic region, that is the Dakkan Plate Peninsula. It is by far the largest biogeographic region in India from the point of view of surface area. It covers an area of nearly 42% of the country. The region contains some conserved forest areas in the states of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Odessa. It is the main region for the deciduous forests in the country. Thorn forests and scrublands and few smaller areas we have evergreen forests also. Sal, famous tree, timber tree, scientifically known as Shoria robusta and the teak, scientific name Tectona grandis, they are the precious timber species of this region. Now, let us discuss the seventh biogeographic region that is the Gangetic plants. This region stretches from the Yamuna River eastwards across the states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal and the coastal plains of Uresa. The Gangetic plant is topographically homogeneous, uniform, for thousands of kilometers, right from New Delhi to West Bengal. It represents one of the most fertile agricultural lands in the world. There are large number of seasonal swamps and other small wetlands where aquatic vegetation and wildlife occur coexistentially. Again here, the Sal, Shoria robusta forests, they represent typical vegetation along the foothills. And also some mixed dry deciduous forests occur in this region. In its Tarai area, there are animals such as Reno, Bengal florican, and Hispid here, which are unique to this region. Now, let us shift to the eighth biogeographical region, that is the coasts. India's long coastline, it supports a diverse biological 
diversity, which remains still least explored. Animals of special interest in this region, that is the coasts, they include dung dong, humpback dolphin of especially which are in estuarine waters, salt water crocodile, turtles such as Batagur Baskar of Sundarbans, avifauna of mangroves, mud flats, and lagoons. Now, the ninth biogeographical region that is the Northeast India. Of all the biogeographical regions that we have discussed until now, the Northeast India is richest in biodiversity and particularly it shows high endemism. The region includes the major portion of the area that falls under the states of Assam and also the entire states of Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura. From the biogeographic point of view, the region is quite interesting as it represents the transition zone between Indian, Indo-Malayan and Indo-Chinese regions. Also, it is the meeting place of the Himalayan mountains in the north and peninsular India. From the floristic point of view, Khasi and Janta hills of Meghalaya, they are known for their biodiversity throughout the Asia. About 40% of the total area under this region is densely forested. Among the fauna, we have in this region the hornbills and small carnivores, which are represented by many species that too are unique to this region only. Some other animals include rhinosaurs, buffalo, elephant, swamp deer, hog deer, pygmy hog and other types of animals. Now let us discuss the last biogeographical region, the tenth one that is the islands. The region represents two different groups of islands. Number first, the Andamans. Number second, Nicobar. Both these are located in the Bay of Bengal. These two groups of islands, they consist of about 348 islands that stretch for an area of about 600 kilometers. As expected, the Andaman has close biogeographic affinity with Burma, the present day Myanmar, while as the Nicobar have strong biogeographic affinity with Indonesian and Southeast Asian regions. As these islands are geographically isolated from the mainland, this region shows high endemism. In this region, about 85% of the total area is under forest cover. The different forest types that we encounter in this region include mangroves, beech forests, evergreen, semi-evergreen, and deciduous forests. The Dipterocarpus species, which are characteristic elements of evergreen forests in Andamans. However, the Nicobar, they lack Dipterocarpus, a unique feature. But at the same time, they are rich in plants like tree ferns, palms, and orchids. In the semi-evergreen and deciduous forests of this region, Species of Terminalia and Lager Citromia, they are quite common. At present, nearly 2,200 plant species have been recorded from these two groups of islands. That in turn represents about 10% of the total Indian flora, but that too on just a small land area, that is 8,000 square kilometers of land area in the country. Out of these uh, 2,200 plant species, nearly 200 species are strict endemics. That means these 200 species are only growing in this smaller piece of land. Among the mammals, crab-eating Nicobar macaw, Nicobar tree shrew, they are quite interesting. Many bird species, 
They are endemic to the islands. For example, Nicobar pigeon, Andaman wood pigeon, Nicobar parakeet, etc. The islands have four species of marine turtles. Also, the dolphins and whales have been recorded from this region. Dear friends, let us summarize what we have learned in today's lecture. First of all, we had a brief introduction about the discipline of biogeography. We learned that biogeography is a scientific discipline that deals with the distribution of biological diversity. Secondly, we listed 10 biogeographical regions and 26 biotic provinces in India. Because of the characteristic geology and climate, each of these biogeographic regions have a unique flora and fauna, which we have discussed in detail. Dear students, with this, we come to the end of today's lecture. Hope you have enjoyed it. For now, I will take your leave. Goodbye.